All right, so today we're in my bathroom and we're gonna treat this entire space with foam to see what kind of results we can achieve. Let's do it. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna cover foam and why it doesn't work for voice actors when it comes to treating your home studio. We'll be using my guest bathroom for this test because it's the only space in my home that works, but it's also the exact size space that a lot of voice actors are voicing in, unfortunately. We don't really have many options as voice actors with our home studios. And just so no one loses their minds during these tests, I made sure to cover the sink, the mirror, and the toilet with acoustic blankets, so that's not a factor here. One of the most common fallacies that I see on a day-to-day -day basis in the voiceover industry is that covering your home studio with foam is all you need to do to acoustically treat your home studio. Now. I'm not sure where or when this false information started making its rounds across the voiceover industry, but it's infected the industry like a virus that just won't go away. Now, a lot of people probably think it only gets newbies or beginners or people just getting into voiceover, but that's not the case, unfortunately. I've personally seen and know voiceover professionals that have been doing this for 20 or 30 plus years who still fall for this, not realizing they could probably drastically up their booking ratio each year if they would just properly treat their studio but for whatever reason, they continue not evolving with the industry like they continuously preach that other people should do. It's a very, very strange place to be. Anyway, let me start things off here by saying that this information that I'm about to cover isn't my opinion. It's facts that are actually backed by science and math, believe it or not. I could get super nerdy in this video, but I'll keep it to a minimum because I know it's already a boring topic for most people, and most of you are probably already wanting to fall asleep right about now. And I totally understand. I'm a nerd and proud of it. I'll also be doing some final tests at the end of this video to further prove why foam doesn't work, so make sure to stay until the end to see and hear those comparisons. All right, so most of us have been here. We go on Amazon, type in acoustic foam, and are presented with an outrageous amount of incredibly affordable foam that makes us all go, oh, thank God. I thought treating my home studio was going to be kind of expensive. You choose one of the options presented, and when it arrives, you cover your entire recording space with it, and bam! A properly treated home studio ready to compete with all of the other top booking actors in the industry. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Rather than your audio sounding like this, you're looking for your audio to sound more like this, either no or very minimal reflections, where your voice isn't bouncing off of every hard surface in the space and reflecting back into the microphone, which gives you that boxy sound that you just heard in the space this treated with one to two inch thick Amazon foam. See, here's the thing. People are used to hearing the word reverb and having it sound like this. But when we're in really small spaces where the walls and hard surfaces are right up on us like this, those Reflections are incredibly early reflections, which is one of the things that give you that boxy sound rather than the usual reverb tail. Not to mention foam only treats high frequencies, and that also contributes to that boxy sound. More on that in just a second. Problem number one, the foam on Amazon is usually only one to two inches thick, if that. That's not even close to what we need to properly soak up the reflections of our voice. I chose this foam here because this is the type of foam that I see covering people's booths the most. Though they're definitely was an improvement in the audio compared to just having bare walls like before I treated the space. You still hear how I sound like I'm in a box, a tube, a cave, or however else you want to describe this sound. It's a boxy sound, not professional. This sound won't cut it in the voiceover industry. We were actually able to hear this sound a lot in the very beginning of the pandemic, actually even worse than this in most cases, when the news had their people recording from home and those people had no idea what acoustically treating a space even was. Now, I didn't treat the door or the ceiling, but I also didn't treat the door or ceiling in my closet, so it's fair. Which goes to show you that when you have the right acoustic treatment, you actually don't have to go crazy and treat every single bare surface, but even if I did treat the door or the ceiling in this space, it would have made such a minimal difference that you probably wouldn't even hear a difference at all. And as I said, I also covered the sink, toilet, and mirror with moving blankets that I folded in half to make them even thicker that actually do a better job than the foam does anyway. Foam, especially one to two inch thick foam, will only soak up high frequencies in a space, leaving out all of the mid and low frequencies. The body or bulk of our voices happen in the mid frequencies. This also happens to be where our hearing is the most sensitive, between around 1K and 5K. Let's take a baby crying, for example. It's no mistake that a baby's cry is incredibly irritating. It's supposed to get our attentions to alarm us of a problem. Well, listen to how prominent a baby's cry is between these frequencies. If I take away every frequency other than that between 1K and 5K, where human hearing is the most sensitive, listen to how prominent a baby's cry still is. And yes, all voices are more prominent between these frequencies because this happens to be where our hearing is the most sensitive and where the body of our voices are. But like I said, even more so with a baby's cry. 
right. So let's check it out. So now knowing this and knowing that foam, especially one to two inch thick foam, only covers the high frequencies, you can clearly see how foam just isn't enough for what we need here as voice actors. In my classes and private coaching sessions, I always recommend my students go with four inch thick foam if they're going to go with foam, but even then I tell them, if they want good results, even four inch thick foam isn't going to cut it by itself. For example, in my voiceover space that you just saw earlier, you saw foam behind me. Not only is this 4-inch thick foam, but I also have tons of other acoustic treatment methods in that space that you can't see. About a year ago, I was cleaning out my closet to make it look a bit less like a tornado went through there. Well, I took out all of the other acoustic treatment methods I had in that closet, except for the 4-inch thick foam that I have covering every bit of bare wall in my booth. So all that was left was the 4-inch thick foam, and what do you know, I immediately sounded like I was in a box because even the 4-inch thick foam isn't enough by itself to properly soak up all the reflections across the frequency spectrum. Now, this is just a glimpse of what it takes to properly treat your home studio, but it's a very important topic for me to get out to everyone. Now, another thing I like to do on my channel is to make sure all of my listeners are well equipped and don't fall for scams. Now, with that being said, if you see any promo videos where someone is claiming to be a home studio expert and wanting you to sign up for their class where they're going to be teaching you all about home studios and behind them you see this type of Amazon foam on their walls, just go forward with caution. I'm not saying they're not experts, but then again, experts wouldn't have this kind of Amazon foam in their space. Just make sure that you vet these people as much as you possibly can, as I always say. Whatever that entails, ask people you trust if they know anything about them. See if they have an online presence and what is that online presence. There's more scams these days than ever before, it seems, and you just always want to keep yourself and your money safe. All right, and real quick, let's just take a look at this absolutely ridiculous description they have listed for this product. Specifically, this part right here. Soundproofing noise canceling. First off, they can't spell, but come on, if I had a dime for every time I saw this, foam doesn't soundproof. There's a massive difference between sound treatment and soundproofing. One keeps sound from getting into your space, and the other keeps the space from sounding like an echo chamber. I get so sick of seeing this because it's fooling people who are just getting into voiceover and other audio-related spaces into thinking this foam will actually help stop their fan noise or the mowers outside or the air conditioning from getting into their recording space. It won't. I've heard it so many times. My students will have bought foam before taking my class, and when we start talking about their noise floor and how high it is, they immediately say, oh, well, I just haven't put up the foam that I bought yet. And then I have to feel like a jerk letting them know that that foam won't help their noise floor, and unfortunately, it won't even do what it's made to do very well either. I hate it. I know, I know I shouldn't feel bad because it's my job to let my students and clients know what will work and what won't work, but I always still feel like the bad guy. All right, I'll get to the final test in a moment, but if you do want help setting up or treating your home studio, you can go sign up with me over on my website. You can also find all of my acoustic treatment recommendations over there as well under recommended gear. All right, before we get to the final test, I want to talk briefly about another topic that I see and hear a lot. Well, I know talent that only have foam in their spaces and they book jobs. Ah, uh, yes. Do they now? But, and this is really important, what kind of jobs are they booking? Probably not the top jobs in the industry. Nah, they're pretty high-profile jobs, man. Yeah, they're probably not. But let's just say they are, because... It can happen on occasion. How long has that person been in the industry? For example, I personally know voice actors who have been doing this for 20 or 30 plus years and are booking, but 
here's the thing. They are being looked at under a microscope like you, who are just getting into the industry, will be. Those voice actors are already established in the industry and are literally riding that wave for as long as they can. The wave of, I've worked with tons of people and have tons of connections in the industry back when home studio quality wasn't a big deal and they still constantly booked out professional studios to go into and record. The truth is, I watched these voice actors' careers dramatically slow down over the past couple of years when the industry got more strict with the home studio requirements during the pandemic now expecting voice talent to record book jobs from their home studio rather than going into a professional studio. They'll continue to book jobs for a little while based on the longevity of their career and on the connections they've made, but that will only last for so long. Like I said, their booking ratio started to slow down dramatically in some cases. Eventually, they will have to jump on board with these new standards like everyone else. You, who are just getting into the industry, don't have that wave to ride. You're being looked at under a microscope because you don't have those connections and haven't worked with casting directors, agencies, and studios for years and years building that familiarity. These agents' rosters that you'll be submitting to are full. When you submit to an agent, they're going to be listening for something to blow them out of the water. Their roster is already full of talent. So if you come limping in with subpar audio because you haven't properly treated your home studio, don't have great microphone technique, don't know how to properly set your levels, have a really high noise floor, or only have one to two inch thick foam covering your space. They'll immediately forget you and move on because you didn't show them a reason whatsoever as to why they should even add you to their already stacked roster. Look, you can't help it if they already have three people in their roster that have your sound, but you can make sure your audio blows them out of the water. Take control of what you can so that you have a fighting chance of getting on with that agent. Lastly, if you were trying to get into a really prestigious college and you had a subpar GPA, but all of the other students that were applying had four .0s, do you think they would even look at your application? You get what I'm saying. Okay, so one really great test that you can do inside your space is the clap test, and it's exactly how it sounds. You literally just clap inside your space, and what you're looking for is for there to be no reflections, no bounce back when you clap. You don't want to hear something coming back at you. One really cool thing that happens is if you've treated your space properly, if you clap and your ears immediately start ringing, that likely means that you've treated your space well. Now, it doesn't work every single time, but it works a lot of the time. So if you clap and your ears start ringing immediately, you've probably done a pretty good job treating your space. But again, more than anything, you're just looking to see or to hear if you hear your clap bouncing back at you. So now let's do this clap test in this space treated with this foam and in my space upstairs treated with many various acoustic methods. So here we go. When voicing in an untreated space, technically you can make this space sound much more treated than it actually is by doing a couple of things. Number one, getting really close to the microphone, and number two, speaking much quieter than usual. Now, these tricks aren't practical because as a voice actor, you will be required to read copy across a full range of pitch and volumes, especially for animation, video games, and promo work, and even a lot of commercial copy will require you to project and get loud. When someone has to project or get really loud, that is precisely when you get a really good idea of how much more you need to treat your space. This is precisely why when you sign up for my home studio setup slash treatment service on my site, one of the requested audio files that I make sure that I get from you is a line that I have you yell inside your space. Obviously, the louder you get, the more you project, the more your voice is going to bounce around the room and back into the microphone, causing that dreaded boxy sound and other problems. So now that we know this, let's do that test. Tonight on the only news outlet you can trust. Find out why your dog and cat's relationship may very well be linked to how often you get up to use the bathroom at night. The shocking conclusion to that ongoing smell that's been lingering in your home all week. And finally, what do they actually say? <laughs> Who am I kidding? You know what they say.